Hi, I'm Wendy Blumenthal with Amherst Media, and we're here for Art Talk, a part of the Amherst Art Walk. Today's guests are Rockley Wolf and Pragya Jane. Rockley and Pragya are both a part of the Pioneer Valley Chapter for Women's Caucus for Art, which is an exciting, exciting newly founded local chapter here for WCA, the Women's Caucus for Art. Uh, Pragya and and Pragya and Rockley. I'm wondering if you guys could just briefly introduce yourselves and, and we'll talk a little bit about WCA and how you've started this local chapter, what the national affiliations are and global affiliations. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, thank you for having us here. We really appreciate it. Um, we um, have been a, a authorized chapter since January of this year and when I moved here from the St. Louis area uh, a couple of years ago, I spent a little bit of time in Connecticut and moved to this area. I was looking to connect in community with other women artists and found basically that they were here, but everybody was scattered. And I, you know, I'd already uh, contacted the uh, national president who was a president chapter of, of St. Louis chapter and mentioned to her that I wanted to start a chapter here. And um, she said basically she was very, you know, excited and supported of it. So I moved forward with it and put a, you know, an ad in Craigslist and Pragya was the first person that answered the ad. And I told her what our intentions were and why and, um, and we moved from there. We became an authorized chapter um, of National w uh, Women's uh, Caucus for the Art, or WCA, mm -hmm. in March of this year. Okay. So I'm going to interrupt you for a second. There, are in, in various communities, Amherst similarly, there are usually a number of different collectives and kind of informal groups of artists, mm -hmm. whether they're gender-based or theme-based or of what type of medium people work off of. Right. How, now you, you that you commented on, you have a prior history working with WCA on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing that was your natural connection to why when you came here and you found that, that uh, support system just inherently not present, you naturally went to, we need a WCA chapter here. Mm -hmm. um, can you speak to that um, a little Or bit? needed community. I looked for other groups in the area and because I'm new, I'm not originally from here, um, you know, it took a little bit of effort and as I talked to other women um, and I didn't see anything that was formal mm -hmm. that you know when I say formal I'm not talking about you know some big mm -hmm. prestigious organization but something that was there in place that I knew of and so that's part of the reason why I just decided to go ahead and move forward with it. I'm used to Wendy of working in community with women mm -hmm. Um, where we work together, we support, we look at the issues that are important for women um, and advocate mm -hmm. for women. And I've been a longtime supporter of, of issues for women, advocacy and support and being involved, um, coming down through the bloodline of my mother mm -hmm. and my grandmother. So that it was important mm -hmm. for me as an artist to have community. Often we work alone and I had heard from several members um, um, who are now uh, members of our group, that they got tired of working alone in their studios. I mean, it's great, you know, you get a lot of work done, but how long can you stay in your studio working alone mm -hmm. without coming out and having some other conversation mm -hmm. or dialogue with other women artists? Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was the main focus. Nice. Pragya, for you, in responding to this ad on Craigslist that Rockley put out, mm -hmm. what, how, how did that feel different for you being that it was, you knew them, or you could at least research if you didn't know, but I'm guessing you probably did, that there was mission and integrity behind it being a WCA chapter and not simply a gathering or collective of women artists, but that there was a, there was a larger, if you will, charge or inherent kind of obligation and responsibility that goes with being a member within Women's Caucus for Art. Can you speak to that a little bit? I, I honestly, when the ad was, it was one of a kind, you know, there isn't too many ads on Craigslist, Craigslist saying, you know, I'm, I'm a woman artist and I'm, st I, I'm wishing, you, you know, wanting to start this organization. And just, just, just the fact that 
this was a women's organization and they're women artists. It, it just caught me because I'm relatively new here too. Yes. I've only been in Pioneer Valley for the last three years and I didn't know that many artists uh, and that's really what I wanted to, you know, because it, it's, it's the support system like, like mm -hmm. Rockley just said and, and we need that. We need that especially if we're new and I think we need that even if we've been here forever because yes. we have other members who've been here 20 years, maybe mm -hmm. longer, and yes. e even they need it. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and that's really what got me going. And then, you know, talking to Rockley because she knew about what WCA mm -hmm. is, and I had absolutely no idea at the time. Yes. And, and then I learned all the things, you know, we can do as a community, mm -hmm. you know, and things we can accomplish, which we can, which is harder to do if you're just, you know, trying to do it by yourself mm -hmm. and, uh, and in a, in a new area altogether. So it was, it, it was perfect, you know, I, I couldn't have asked for something better and mm -hmm. it just kind of fell into my lap. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Rockley and I established the chapter and I, I was, I'm actually proud to say that and, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> I am. And, um, yeah, to call myself one of the founding members was something as fantastic as this. And now we're doing, sh we already did our first show, which mm -hmm. is, uh, it's, it's up and running. And, and we've heard such wonderful things from nice. everybody about it. Nice. And, you know, what a great response and so much support, even from the community, even from the men, <laughs> which, is, which is great. And uh, <laughs> it's really, really, that's what it's been. Because I've shown in India, I've, show, I've shown three cities in India, you know, as we speak right now, I have another one coming up in December. And I needed to do some, something right here, you know, where I am, something mm -hmm. I can drive to mm -hmm. and, you know, n get to know more and more people around me. Mm -hmm. And I think I've really accomplished that with this group. Nice. And we just got started. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for, for the energies and passion around getting this going. I want to back up for just a minute. We're going to hear a little bit more about your current exhibit and some really mm -hmm. exciting upcoming exhibits in the next, well, one and two months, but as well as a, a very exciting exhibit that you have coming up in March. So we're going to get to that. But I, I'm going to back us up just a minute because there is a, Th there is a larger theme that, that I'm feeling very personally connected to you guys because of, and that is that this, you didn't just start a women's collective. You didn't just start a women in arts. You, you've, you very intentionally went with Women's Caucus for Art, which has its own national and international um, relationships even within United Nations, yes. um, with, with a ver very specific mission and language around equity for women, equity for children. And I'm wondering if you could I mean, you, you both answered what that, you especially have answered what that call was specifically, your, your prior history and the mm -hmm. importance of that. But could you talk a little bit about if and how that particular mission has shaped your work? What are the implications right. of you being associated with, with WCA and how has that shaped your work? Well, first of all, um, National Women's Caucus for Art is almost 40 years old um, coming up next year. Um, the National Convention will be in New York City um, this year and so the Northeast chapters will be involved with that. But the mission of National Women's Caucus for Art has always been uh, coming out of the College Art Association. Some members still are mm -hmm. members of the College Art Association. And I, from my understanding, there were some challenges because there are men who are also in the College okay. Art Association around the exhibits and the work and the focus mm -hmm. of, of what the women um, who are now uh, national WCA founders okay. um, were doing, presenting. And obviously those issues and that work was of critical importance to the lives of women in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so out of CAA came WCA. Mm -hmm. And they set down their foundation, the bylaws, and the focus has always been the support of women artists who are emerging mid-career and established professional women artists. Mm -hmm. And rapidly, the headquarters is in New York City, and just rapidly the chapters begin to spread throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So each chapter is unique for their own area mm -hmm. because each area is different. 
but the focus is basically the same. You know, it's basically the same. The support for the community of women artists, creating opportunities, educational opportunities, exhibit opportunities for the women who are in mm -hmm. their community, as well as giving the time and energy and support to the national WCA. Mm -hmm. And it's grown and grown and expanded over the years. Um, many very well-known um, artists, Georgia O'Keeffe, Elizabeth Catlett, uh, Faith Reen Gold, Judy Chicago, are members and have received what we give out every year at national, the national mm -hmm. convention, the national, it's called a Lifetime um, Achievement Award mm -hmm. to women, outstanding women in the visual arts. Mm -hmm. Some very clear intentions around appreciating the contributions of women and yes. establishing leadership opportunities in addition to this, this both small and large support yes. network. Yes. It's pretty outstanding. <laughs> Prago, along, along those lines, you mentioned that you've just been in the Valley for three years. Yes. And I know I've previously spoken with you, and you've been in the States for four, is that correct? Four and a half. Four-ish. Yeah, four and four a half. Ish. So how, can you talk a, a little bit about how, what's, what kind of transformations have your work taken on since you've arrived in the States, and, and then maybe also now since you've connected with WCA, and how do you, do you see yourself having come to this place? through your, your personal stories as an artist and how now you're, you're holding this banner for um, a very important cause and a very important group. I know, it's, it's I feel the weight. <laughs> it's, it's good. Uh, well, with, as far as my work goes, I think um, I, I grew up as soon as I moved here. Mm -hmm. I grew up, my, I grew up personally and my work grew, you know, it was, it was more mature. I was picking subjects which were more intense and uh, you know colors has always been one of the most integral part of my art I always paint very bright colors and it's really out there is nothing subtle about it and uh, but it's more the more the intent and and the the structure mm -hmm. and the subjects that really evolved and I would say that you know the style that I paint now is what I evolved in the US and it's kind of uh, a blend between what I learned in India and what I learned here. I wouldn't call it absolute American art, nor is it Indian art. Mm -hmm. it's, it's somewhere in between, mm -hmm. and uh, it's hard to put a tag on it. Sure. And uh, with WCA, I, I feel, you know, because I, I met all these women, and just, just to hear their thoughts, you know, the, the older, more, um, the ones with the experience, just hearing the things they've done, they've been through, what they paint. I, it, you know, somewhere it, it has made an impact, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I see myself picking different subjects now, things like, uh, you know, like uh, how a woman really feels in, the, in this world. Mm -hmm. And earlier it was, it was what I feel, mm -hmm. but I not necessarily as a woman, as a person. But now it's just a slightly different perspective, and it, it becomes more towards the feminine side of me. And uh, I, yeah, I, I, I've learned a lot from all these women, and I see myself growing mm -hmm. and getting more and more mature with my work, just you know, just through all these experiences. That's beautiful. It sounds like you're you're coming to a deeper identity place. If I could be so bold to try. Yeah, to I would. Say, I that. would agree with that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, that's very special. Well, I could talk to you guys forever about women's issues and how you're in these really important roles, not to feel pressure about, but mm -hmm. to feel prideful about no, absolutely. Um, yes. really helping people tell their stories and creating dialogue and creating opportunities. Um, and not just amongst women, but amongst all of us. Yes, um, absolutely. Regardless of gender and culture and language and all that. Um, but, but bringing about women's issues through what you, you have this gift and talent to do. And so that brings me to my next question, which I was thinking earlier um, about this larger overarching mission of WCA and my personal conversations with both of you, knowing the integrity a bit of, your, of who mm -hmm. you are as persons and really mm -hmm. respecting that and thinking, we here at Amherst Media have been really fortunate to garner a relationship with you guys <laughs> that is one and that's- that's also windy. That's mutual <laughs> and I think that that really um, smacks of this, this bigger collaborative mission on mm -hmm. behalf of people in general, women specifically. 
So we are looking forward to an upcoming exhibit with you guys for September and October, and I'm going to ask both of you to speak a little bit about that, and then we'll move into the, the sneak mm -hmm. peek of your March exhibit, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. But I think there's this, this crossroads of collaborations between your group and it, it, the, the you were speaking, that, that identity, that change of identity, the change of work, the implications, it, it kind of naturally pushes you to a place of collaborating with other folks, maybe even non-artists like Amherst Media in certain ways, with schools yes. or with shelters yes. or Absolutely. who knows what, Absolutely. where those collaborations will turn. And so um, I'm going to kind of just throw that out there and leave it open and ask if, who, if do you want to pick up the charge around talking about the upcoming September or October? exhibit here at Amherst Media? Yes, well, you know, as you know, we currently have Illustrated Woman running yeah. um, over at the NACO, um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, NACO, yes, NACO uh, yeah. a gallery. It's a wonderful venue. Um, it's a wonderful place, and everyone over there was absolutely fantastic, because we had no idea where we we're going to go in supporting us and what we were doing, and it's a very intimate space, was absolutely perfect for our first show. And um, as you know, the um, reception was on August the 8th, and we were just amazed at the people that came, the feedback that we got from it. And in you inviting us over here to, <laughs> to do, you know, this interview, um, we were just, like, delighted. And as we talked further in, in regards to the type of work we're doing and our history that we shared with you, and you inviting us to do um, the the show um, coming up next month in October, we were elated because this is what the focus of Women's Caucus for Art is about, mm -hmm. really bringing to the forefront uh, the passion that women in this organization feel towards issues that concern women around social justice, around um, you know, equal rights and, mm -hmm. and, and the whole gamut. And so uh, the Illustrated Woman was our debut show. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it was nice. And it's like, you know, an Illustrated Woman, you know, coming <laughs> out with your fancy fancies and, you know, <laughs> illustrating a woman in I any way that, you know, you so feel choose. And yeah. we, we put out the definition of what illustrate means to, to make illustrious and several other things. But this is going to mm -hmm. be a very different type mm -hmm. of exhibit. It, it addresses more of the seriousness and concerns where we here in the United States, uh, American women, we have a great deal of freedom. We also have our challenges, but they're nothing like women that live in other countries worldwide. Mm -hmm. And they have some of the same issues, but their voices are not mm -hmm. heard. So in doing this, I feel that we get a chance to uh, present the voices of those silent voices that are not only in this country but worldwide, worldwide. Yeah. and for me personally as an artist and as a woman and as a woman of color that's an honor to me and i really appreciate you offering us to do this we thank you immensely yes. so this next exhibit coincides with uh, national breast cancer awareness month national domestic violence awareness month mm -hmm. and uh, national Hispanic Awareness Month, among many other things. But, right. but I know in talking, our, our two organizations have decided to kind of hone in on those three, because that's huge. Yes. Um, and you guys have come up with a, your board with this beautiful theme, and I don't even think I could articulate it correctly. So can you tell us what the, <laughs> what the theme and the title of the upcoming exhibit is? Well, when, when we knew that we had to, to do this, um, we thought about it and said, okay, we just don't want to say, oh, we're doing a show in honor of mm -hmm. Domestic Violence Month and yeah. Breast Cancer yeah. Awareness Month and Hispanic Heritage. Heritage. Yeah. We wanted to come up with something that was intriguing, and but at the same time w was not going to be too difficult for the members to address because mm -hmm. we have to create work. Yeah around these and you know we didn't have a whole lot of time mm -hmm. which is good it's good to work <laughs> under pressure you oh know, yes learn it how works it looked to do <laughs> that you know and so um we contacted the board and you know i shared with pragya um some of the the um themes that uh, were bouncing around That's out right. there yeah. 
And uh, we just thought Echoes and Evidence mm. was perfect mm. for this show. That's right. Simple, yeah. to the point, you know, what is an echo? Mm -hmm. Something that reverberates. It right? can reverberate, you know, like, a, you know, a voice or a situation or an issue um, from backwards or frontward or current. Mm -hmm. And then evidence, mm -hmm. you know, and when, you, when you, you're dealing with domestic violence and breast cancer awareness and cultural heritage, there has to be some evidence, Absolutely. you know. The evidence around breast cancer is the test. The evidence around domestic violence is the photographs and, you know, the, the doctor's reports, yes. And then the, the heritage uh, evidence has to do with what has been passed down, what, what has been written and what has been carried orally. Mm -hmm. So those were the things that we looked at when we came up with this um, with theme. And it's a very, very exciting and intriguing theme, which will cause us to have to go deeper into ourselves, you know, and to look at ourselves and look at, at ourselves as women. Some of us have had those experiences. Mm -hmm. I've already received some information um, from some of the artists who've had those personal experiences, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with at least two of the subjects, mm -hmm. um, parts of the theme. Right. And I'm sure we'll be getting more, but it, you know, it, it makes us, it's like, you know, bringing a forth from within how you visualize and see and express mm -hmm. an issue that, you know, is very, very um, telling mm -hmm. and also very challenging mm -hmm. for, for the entire society, not only women. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I cannot wait to see the <laughs> walls and what graces this building for two months with this show. It's yes. going to be outstanding. I think you're going to be. We can't wait quite to put it up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and Prague, yeah, I, I didn't mean to leave you out in that thing, mm -hmm. but you, you are instrumental amongst this group in getting a very exciting exhibit coming up, international exhibit. She's going yes. big in India. Tell us a little bit about that. It was just something I thought, you know, with my links, with my connections and, you know, because I show in India like I talked about, you know, it's just something I worked on. I said, why not? Why not take all these wonderful mm. women, all their beautiful works and, and what's a better occasion to take it than International Women's Day, which is March 8th. Nice. And that's mm -hmm. when we're going to be showing, we're taking a 40 women show wow. to India, to New Delhi, um, and we're going to have this at Art Mall, which is India's largest art gallery. It's 15,000 square foot, square feet of space, three story. Wow. So it's it's big, and and we are going to be part of this. Sh I mean, there are going to be about a hundred more Indian women, which are wow. going to be part of the show. So it's going to be over 150, roughly, mm -hmm. artists that are going to be part of this, and. And I know that the response I got from everybody, you know, when I brought it up and everyone was like, oh, yes, let's do this. And mm -hmm. I really didn't know what, you know, I, I just mm -hmm. put it out there. I didn't know what to expect, but such enthusiasm, you know, kept me going. And I mm -hmm. said, I have to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have another gallery down in Bangalore, uh, which invited us to have the same show. So nice. now this is a traveling show. And it's not just one city, but two cities wow. in India. And it's going to be almost a month-long show. Nice. In Will it be the same pieces? Yes, nice. the same pieces. They'll travel and uh, then hopefully, you know, sell half of them <laughs> and uh, bring the rest <laughs> back. And uh, th it'll be great because there's going to be media. There's nice. going to be, you know, everything involved. And we're going to mm -hmm. have a beautiful reception and... Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a great cultural exchange yeah. between Indian and American women artists yes. and galleries. It's wonderful. So yeah, great. And also, we are, we are also um, looking at sending a letter to the American Embassy yes. in India. This was Pragya's suggestion, um, and asking them if they would host a reception. So that's also a possibility mm -hmm. too. So really beautiful collaborations. Yes, it's, and, it's and they're in great. increased empowerment again. Yes, between 
Yeah, and, and I think what's going to be the most beautiful part about it is that it's going to be an all-women's show. Mm -hmm. and it's, going, it's really about empowering women, and we're going to see an Indian side to it mm -hmm. and an American side mm -hmm. to it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be amazing to see the same subject mm -hmm. we deal with in two absolutely different parts of the world, right. and I honestly can't wait nice. to see it. <laughs> Which one of you is taking a video camera? Oh yes, it'll yeah. it'll be covered. You know, you want to talk a little bit yeah. about the press coverage, uh, Pragya? Of the show, yes, yeah, we're going to be covered uh, in uh, magazines and uh, in every in all the top-notch newspapers. Nice. And there's actually even in in-flight magazines. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's going to be great, nice. and and I'm I'm going to do everything to make this fantastic. And mm -hmm. I have no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. So I'm going to make sure that we put up contact information for you guys yes. for your, I assume you're open to new members at this point absolutely yes absolutely in fact for the show that's coming up um, next month um, you know we didn't totally close it to I mean it is a members only show but if anybody would like to join uh, Women's Caucus or Art Pioneer Valley chapter um, you can contact us um, you know, at our email address, which is WCAPRV at gmail.com. And you can request an application for both national and for our local chapter. And you have to join national. Um, it's an absolute requirement. And you will be very happy because the benefits that are available through national are also awesome. And, um, and then, you know, you, you just pay both the national and the uh, local chapter dues and we're not really charging anything for the show mm -hmm. um, there is a fifteen dollar hanging fee um, you know to cover the time <laughs> and energy of, <laughs> of those uh, uh, exhibition committee who's going to be putting it up but for what you're getting back in return mm -hmm. I mean it's that's what excellent. you're participating in absolutely, yeah. absolutely. also also that uh, the benefit of joining WCA Pioneer Valley is not just opportunities within Pioneer Valley like we're going international yeah. mm -hmm. and and the other chapters in the country open their shows to us too and you know like we were part of a Boston show uh, last month I mean it's actually on right now as yes. we speak so yes. it's not really just you know, we're not confined. We, we really have limitless boundaries right. here, and right. there's so much we can do. Right. For yeah. instance, we have, um, like Pragya and myself um, are members, and uh, I believe Lorna Ritz. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure, absolutely, but um, I know that they're, my, Pragya and myself, and, and maybe two other members. Um, Sandy Streeter is also a member of the Boston chapter, and we joined because at the time we didn't have our chapter mm -hmm. authorized. But since we have been authorized, we now have two members who have joined us uh, who are from the uh, New Hampshire nice. chapter. And they, you know, they do shows there. And I just got an email today from one of those people, Phyllis Hoffman, saying that she was just absolutely awed and um, very, very pleasantly surprised at how quickly we came together mm -hmm. and going from no chapter, no mm -hmm. nothing at all, to doing all of this activity and offering these shows. And mm -hmm. she said she was very, very proud to be a part of this and looking forward to do more yeah. work. I feel the same way. It's really <laughs> an impressive amount of work in a short amount of time. Thank you. And incredible community collaborations as well. So Amherst Media welcomes you. We're glad to have you guys. Thank you. Again, we'll make sure we have your contact information up at the end of this conversation so people know how to get a hold of you and yes. find out how to join and as well as where to catch mm -hmm. your upcoming shows. And right. we invite everyone back here at, at Amherst Media next month, September 2nd, I believe, is Art Walk. It's the first Thursday of every month. Art Walk begins at 5 and we host the artist reception. We'll, so we'll see these two fine ladies and their members here mm -hmm. for some food and munchies. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll do a an in-studio interview with you at that point, specifically to that show. Yes, and try to get over to see Illustrated at Woman. Um, it's up until August the 30th, 30th yes. um, at NACL Gallery uh, at uh, 592 Main Street um, in Amherst. Uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with that show <laughs> also. Nice. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you for Art Talk with the Amherst Art Walk next month. Mm -hmm.